a lot of people like using 3D elements in their presentations, and uh, to a varying degree, this is this is quite hard to do because usually you have to integrate a couple different applications. We'll just take a look at one quick example of how someone might integrate some 3D elements into their Autoplay Media Studio application. It's a great way to turbocharge your creativity and add some options to your workflow. Okay, so I've got a basic 3D project here. In this case, I'm using Bryce. Um, you could use any 3D application, though. And I'm just going to set up a basic white scene here. So we've got absolutely nothing in our scene at all. And we're just going to go ahead and add an object. In this case, let's go ahead and use a cube. And I'll add a very basic texture to it. Okay, there we go. So I've kept it very simple. And as you can see, we've got a 3D cube, and it's been skinned with a texture. Let's go ahead and export that as an image. We'll call it cube, and we'll send it to our desktop as a Photoshop file. Now I'm going to go ahead and mask that. All 3D applications give you some type of an option for creating masks. And we can export this as an image. We'll call it mask. We'll put it on our desktop. And we can actually use that as a channel in Photoshop. So we'll go ahead into Photoshop now. And we'll bring those two documents in. And we're going to go ahead and drag our mask into our cube document. Okay, so we can close down that mask document. And now I'm just going to go ahead and copy the mask layer into a new channel layer. And that creates a selection from that. So I can select that channel come back to our layers palette and just lift that cube right up off the background okay so we've got this cube now free floating around and it can do anything we want with it so I'm going to go ahead and create a few different copies of it because in this particular instance we're going to show the functionality of this 3D object via a button object which is of course very obvious functionality for what you might use 3D elements for so I'm creating a grayed out state there for the disabled state I'm going to go ahead and redden this up a bit there we go and that'll look good for our basic button then I'm going to create an over state then I've got to create a down state okay there we go it's ready to export so I'm going to go ahead and select all those layers the pixel data and crop to that and then I'm just going to export our images as we did in the buttons chapter Okay, so I'll save this as a button. Oops, there we go. I'll just take it. There we go. I'm going to save each state as over, down, and disabled. And then I can go ahead and close down Photoshop. And from Autoplay Media Studio, we'll go to Tools, Button Maker. And then we're just going to minimize that so that we can drag our images into the images pane here. And we can go ahead and construct our button. As you can see, these cubes look excellent, even when sized down to that small size. So it's a pretty effective element to use. As you can see, it's quite interesting, and it, it'll lend a lot of value to your projects. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag my images in here real quick to create the button. And then I'm going to get rid of that click here text and save our button. As you can see, it works just fine. We can preview it in the preview area here. We'll go to File, Save As, and we'll save it as Cube onto our desktop. I'm going to close that down. I can delete our images now, and I'm just going to drag that into our Autoplay Media Studio project. There we go. We've got our button. It's functional. It's ready to use. If I change the background, for example, to a gradient, we can see that the button has a very high level of alpha that interacts very well with the background colors. There's no trim, no halo no crookedness. Let's go ahead and slide this corner in a bit to size our object down. And there we go. That's kind of an interesting looking little element. We'll go ahead and use Control D to create some copies of it really quick. And we'll grab a hold of them and align and distribute them on our page here. And then we'll go ahead and preview that. That's quite an interesting looking little project considering that we've only invested a couple minutes of time. So let's go ahead and press F5 to preview. And we'll pretend this is a pseudo sort of button row. Could be text labels beside those, for example. And as you can see, they work really good. The mouse overs work excellent. I might have adjusted the colors a little bit more um, in the case of an actual project, but you get the idea. It's a quick way to throw together something from 3D elements, and you can make use of uh, extremely elaborate 3D elements even, and make them interact with other things in your autoplay and media studio projects via ping transparency. 
So you can even create, for example, a 3D overlay that sits over top of other elements of your project, which is quite handy when you're creating, a, for example, a user interface for a, a game or a, some type of presentation. Okay, so that's a brief overview of using 3D objects in Autoplay Media Studio, and uh, I hope to see you guys using your creative powers to take this idea um, out into new areas and, and uh, come into our forum and show, show us what you're doing because we're always excited to see uh, your creative ideas.